is called A Dance with Dragonflies. And this one will be from our third hardcover, which is not yet released. Um, it is scheduled for release in spring of 2013. And it is, the book will be called Rupert's Tales, Rupert Helps Clean Up. Rupert, Rupert's Tales, Rupert Helps Clean Up will feature four stories about reducing, reusing, and recycling. And here's the first one. It's called A Dance with Dragonflies. Here we go. Rupert the Rabbit was far from his usual place, away from the meadow that was a round kind of space. Melvin the Mouse had come to him that morning, fretting with alarm, bringing him a warning. Come with me, he'd said, his eyes full of worry. I need your help today. Melvin didn't wait for him to answer. He just ran quickly away. Rupert followed Melvin through the meadow and thick group of trees, right through the heart of the tall cypress with their long, knobby knees. Hurry, he called. There's no time to waste. She'll drown if you don't really make haste. Rupert was taken by, su by surprise that his friend could run so fast, but understood the problem when they stopped near a lake at last. There, right near the shore, was a duck with something covering her head. Rupert had never seen such a thing, but it filled his heart with dread. She couldn't see anything or even tell up from down. Melvin was right. Without his help, the duck might even drown. From time to time, he'd seen a duck or two once or twice before when they'd flown over the forest, leaving their watery shores. But he'd never seen one close like this and didn't know what to do. For Rupert, web feet and sharp duck bills were something that were brand new. Hurry now, Melvin told him. Take that awful bag off of her head. I'm not tall enough, he explained, or I do it myself instead. Rupert hopped closer to the frightened duck, watching her thrash about. He could see Melvin was right. It was up to him to help her out. Hold still for a moment, Rupert said, talking loud so she could hear. She was thrashing about, squawking and crying as Rupert came near. I'll take that thing off your head, he told her, and you'll soon be all right. Then Rupert grabbed the thing with his teeth, pulling and holding on tight. The, ba the bag had an awful taste, nothing at all like grass or clover. He spat the thing out. Puh! Glad that part of the rescue was now over. Puh! Can you do that? Puh! Eh! Puh! Thank you, quacked the duck, her big round eyes filled with relief and delight. She shivered, saying, that awful thing gave me a terrible fright. But what is it, asked Rupert, as he sniffed at it laying on the ground. How about it? Come on. On the ground. That's it. Thank you for your help. That's great. I've never seen anything like this before, just laying around. I told you already, Melvin chimed in. Weren't you listening at all? It's called a bag, he said, scowling, and it shouldn't be here. Not at all. A bag, Rupert asked, one eyebrow raised and a frown on his face. But what does it do and why is it here? Who put it in this place? This bag is made of plastic. It's something people use for many things. For them, it's very useful, but for us, disaster is all it brings. Oh, said the duck, there are a lot of those bag things laying all around, in the bushes, under the water, and look, just look, all over the ground. Rupert looked around, both to his left and to his right. To his left and to his right. <laughs> Can you do that? Yeah, that's right, follow me. Rupert looked all around, both to his left and to his right. To his left and to his right. Is it my left or your left? <laughs> he was surprised and shocked to see such an ugly sight. I've told you, Melvin said. People are people and they're not like you and me. They bring things with them and then leave behind their garbage, as you can see. But Rupert had seen many people before there by his favorite tree. They came and went without ever leaving any garbage he could see. They came from their homes to the forest, out in the open air, just like you and me, where they could dance, drum, and celebrate without a single care. They often made fires and music and sometimes a lot of noise, but he'd come to enjoy the times he could see all the girls and boys. Not once had he seen a bag or other garbage left behind. The people he had met 
had always been welcoming and kind. Still, he could see what Melvin said was true with his very own eyes. The people who had left this mess behind weren't very wise. There were bits and pieces of strange things as far as he could see. He wondered what all the things he saw in the water could be. Suddenly, he heard an odd noise, a humming or a kind of buzzing sound. Hum, buzz, hum, buzz, everybody. Hum, buzz, hum, buzz. Rupert called Melvin, don't be silly, you need to look up, not down. Rupert saw Melvin was right yet again, as he so often seemed to be. A swarm of dragonflies flying right toward him was really something to see. They made a bright cloud of color with, with bodies of green, purple, red, and blue. The air was humming. Hum, hum, buzz, buzz. The air was humming with the sound of their wings. The ground beneath them was too. Burr, burr, burr. He heard several tiny voices shout with alarm, come quickly, and oh, you must hurry, and Shelly will soon come to harm. Rupert saw Melvin turn to the duck with worry in his eyes. Hurry now, Daphne, he told her, make those web flea of yours fly. And you too, Rupert, Melvin told him as Daphne ran after her friends. Your help may be needed before this whole adventure comes to an end. Together the friends ran away from the lake towards the trees. Rupert wondered what was wrong and just who Shelley might be. The dragonflies led the way, weaving patterns of circles in the air, letting him know he was on the right track and that he was almost there. He didn't have very long to wait to find out Shelley was a squirrel, that she was fond of nuts and had a bushy tail ending in a curl. The rest of her, from waist to head, Rupert couldn't see at all. She was stuck inside something that was silver, skinny, and tall. What do you think that might be? Rosie? A soup can. There you go. She's done it again, Melvin said. I don't believe it, but it's true. All right, Daphne, he told the truck. The duck, you know what we're going to do. Once again, Melvin told Rupert he too would have to help out. It was turning out to be a strange day without any doubt. The thing where Shelly was stuck, Melvin said, was something called a can, just like Rosie said. Inside where she couldn't reach was a bit of food left there by man. Hold on in there, Melvin called out, talking loud to the squirrel. When I tell you to push, then do your best. You can do it, girl. Then Daphne sat down on the end of the can and nodded her head. All right, Melvin called out. Everyone do exactly what I said. Come on now, Rupert. Melvin turned to him. Help me pull her out. They pulled her tail. Shelly pushed real hard until they heard her shout. Ah! <laughs> it's no use, Daphne said. This time the can is just too tight. We'll have to get more help or she'll just have to stay here all night. No, they heard Shelly moan, still stuck inside the can so deep. I can't stay inside here, she said. I'll never get to sleep. Rupert looked around to see there were acorns scattered all about. He wondered what he might be able to do to help his new friend out. Well, I have an idea, Melvin announced. Everyone gather around me. There's a people place over there, he said to the dragonflies. Do you all see? Yes, yes, yes. Can everybody say yes? Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, Rupert heard many voices agree. They could see it from the air. It was a place that had a table right through the trees, just over there. People, Rupert asked, taken completely by surprise. You told me being near people wasn't very wise. Why, yes, agreed Daphne. Many times you told me the very same thing. And me, added a purple dragonfly. Think of the danger they bring. Shelly twitched her tail wildly as she dug into the dirt with her feet. People aren't like us, she said. They're not anyone we want to meet. But Rupert wasn't afraid of people. He'd seen them many times before. He'd often listen to their music, their stories, tears, laughter, and more. I have a plan, Melvin said. I think I know exactly what we need to do. To help Shelly, we need someone big to help us. That you can all see is true. 
"Get their attention," Melvyn suggested, "especially the girls and the boys. Fly in circles close to them," Daphne agreed. "Hum and buzz. Make lots of noise." "You know the deal. Hum, buzz, hum, buzz, everybody!" Lots of noise. Hum, buzz, hum, buzz, hum, buzz, hum, buzz, hum, buzz. That's a good idea, said Melvin, smiling, and then circle back here real quick. Maybe you should drop some acorns on them, Shelley said. That would do the trick. No, let's say I'll say no. No! Rupert rolled his eyes and frowned. He didn't think that was very smart. If you wanted someone to help, he thought you should ask from your heart. He was glad they left the acorns on the ground when they all flew away, but it was hard to wait, wondering who his winged friends would bring, bring their way. It didn't take very long to find out if their plan would work, not very long at all. Before he knew it, they were there, surrounded by people who seemed very tall. The dragonflies had brought with them several children, laughing and having fun. It seemed to take no time at all before Shelley was free, and they were done. He'd been afraid when he'd seen them come running over the grassy hill, but like Melvin and Daphne, he had managed somehow to just sit still. The girls and boys who'd followed the dragonflies had seen the problem right away, and though they'd been a little scared, they were gentle with Shelley and saved the day. Look over here, he heard one girl say, there's garbage laying on the ground. And not just over there, answered a boy, it's everywhere, just look around. Rupert looked at Melvin, then gave his, his good friend a happy wink. They could use this help if they knew how, if we could only think. That's when a dragonfly crashed into him, because he was flying too low. I have it, Rupert cried, you can lead the children by flying to and fro. Good idea, agreed Melvin with a nod, fly around and lead the way. Then hover over the garbage that needs to be picked up and thrown away. For the rest of the day, that's exactly what all of the new friends did. Rupert, Melvin, Melvin Daphne, Shelley, the dragonflies, and all of the kids. Rupert the rabbit lives near a tall tree in the forest and has many friends. He's curious, furry, brown, and helpful, and it seems his lessons never end. If he could reduce, reuse, and recycle himself, I have the feeling he would, but that's something that you and I, as friends of Rupert, can do and should. So the next time you see a dragonfly, think of Rupert and look around. Perhaps you'll see something that needs to be picked up, just waiting to be found. Rupert and his friends thank you, and I do too, for helping keep the earth cleaned up, like I know you do. Thank you for listening.